So this is Adobe Lightroom Classic. Um, if you ever used Lightroom before, this is probably what you saw. Uh, the, um, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit of, of what, what all this stuff is, but uh, just suffice to say that um, it's what you want, probably. So the difference between the two are, with the classic version, you store your photos locally on a hard drive in your, either in your computer or as I do, uh, an external hard drive hooked up to your computer. So your photos, if you're working out of your basement, your photos are in your basement, which means you better have a backup of whatever you have. You better have a backup. And, and if you're at all nervous like I am, you better have a backup that's not in your house, someplace offsite. Um, so um, the classic version uh, is the most powerful and, and does absolutely everything. The CC, which I will fire up now, version looks entirely different and you don't store your photos locally. Adobe stores them for you online, which is, which can be a great thing if you don't like organizing your things and, and keeping track of backups and knowing where, you know, having to worry about where your files are and all of that. Uh, it's a great thing. So this is what the, the CC version looks like. So it's quite different. And let me just make it a little bit bigger here in the screen so you can see the whole thing. So um, they have not added everything to the CC version that they have to classic. I think they will. I think they will catch up. Um, so with the CC version, you get one terabyte of online storage which uh, is, you know, for, for a lot of people, that's a lot of storage. That's, you know, that's a good deal. Um, both of them are priced the same at uh, uh, $9.95 a month, and you're paying that for the rest of your life. Uh, so put that in your budget. But um, uh, the, the, the beauty of it is, of the, the CC, is um, if you... Uh, do something on your laptop, it will show up on your phone right now and it will show up on your iPad right now and, and you can do it. And if you wanna work on it on your iPad, it changes in your computer, it changes all, all, all to your devices. So it will, for one price, change for all your devices. Um, the bad thing is, one, it doesn't do everything that the others do. Uh, you don't have uh, storage, you don't have backup locally. So every time, if you don't have access to the internet, you're not accessing your photos. For some people, that's a problem. Um, and uh, um, my brain just went dead on what the other major disadvantage is. Uh, uh, oh, keywords. So one of the ways that I find my photos is putting in a keyword. So every photo has m many keywords, which we'll talk about later. So I can find my photos really fast by, you know, if I'm looking for a, a sunset, I type in sunset and within seconds, all my sunset photos show up because I've keyworded them. Um, the CC version, you can't do that. So what uh, I think the CC version is really great for is if you shoot with uh, an iPhone uh, or you shoot uh, a lot with a camera that you have hooked up Wi-Fi or something and you want to immediately uh, work on the photo and, and put it on a web page or put it on a blog or put it on Facebook or whatever, wherever you're sharing your photos online, CC uh, makes it really easy. The interface is simpler. It's easier to work in CC than it is classic. But I think for people who are fairly serious about their photos, classic is the way to go. The one really cool thing about CC is I told you you can't search by keyword but they have, they're using artificial intelligence to be able to look at the photos and do a search, a keyword search by what is physically inside of your image. And it is amazingly good and fast. So I'll show you here on, here on, uh, on uh, CC. Uh, if I type barn and hit enter, it's looking through all my photos and let's run a little slow, that fast. There are my barn photos. Oh, yeah. They are not keyworded barn. 
I mean, you know, they can tell these are barn doors. How the hell they do that? It's, <laughs> you know, it's stunning. It is stunning that what, what they're doing. Yes. Got fooled by the cow, but it's a barnyard. <laughs> right. You know, um, it, it's just absolutely amazing. You know, it's, if I want to find a car, uh, delete car, put in type car. So the bad thing is, there's pictures of car. Ooh, it thinks that's a car. It's mm. not. But, it, but it, you know, it did shots of uh, New York streets. I mean, how's it know that's a car? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It really is. Um, the bad thing is, uh, you know, one of the things that I keyword is people's names. So if, you know, you have your, your favorite son and your not so favorite son, uh, you know, you can type in favorite son and, and your favorite son pictures will show up. Uh, there's no way to do that in CC. So, so tonight we're mainly going to talk about classic because classic does everything possible and CC doesn't. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit the CC version and come back to classic. And you can see the interface is, is much different. You know, it just looks different and it, it works differently, but, uh, but that, that's where we're at there. So any questions on, on uh, CC or classic? Lauren? Yes. Uh, it's Nancy. When on the, on the uh, CC, if you add tags to them, the meta tags, does that not pick up your, can it not find your picture through those words? Right, in the, in the CC version, that is correct, it will not. Yes. It will not find it your picture. Well, then what's right. the point of putting all those words in there? Well, in the classic it does, but in the CC it does not. What did she ask? Everyone? Oh, I'm sorry. So, so in the CC, she asked what in the in the CC version does does it pick yeah. up the meta tag data, the keywords that you would type yeah. in. So the answer is no. Yeah. Um, Why do it then? Why does it have it there? Pardon me. Why does it why does it have it there if it's not it doesn't do anything? Why do you have to bother putting in all those keywords then? Well, the the classic version is based off of keywords, the CC version is not. Right, but it still has a place where you can put keywords put, in. Put in metadata on the CC? Yeah. Yes. Well, I yeah. have to admit, Yeah, it's over on the, I have to admit something it's over I on the right today. hand. Hang on. Uh, I realized today okay. that they, they updated uh, CC in, this week, and I didn't yeah, notice. I didn't look at it today. All the way down on the right. All the way down on the right-hand side, towards uh, right above the eye, yeah. there's a tag there. Look at and that. They added that. that. Oh. Well, See, okay. You, so they got so enough now, feedback that they've got enough feedback okay. that they added keywords. So it will then work by those keywords to find your subject, yes? Let's add a crazy keyword. Crazy. Okay. And do a little test. All right. That's always the way I <clears throat> figure out things is, let's see what it does. Because I, I found the CC much easier for me to work with than the classic. The CC is easier to work with than classic, but yeah. Much but easier. it's got limitations. Okay, so it's just saying that it didn't find that, that crazy that I just typed in on that keyword for the other picture. Oh, but did you, but oh. you didn't add it on the little tag down at the bottom right? Yes, I did. I just did oh, that. Oh, you did? Okay, I just, I just couldn't see it, I guess. Yeah. Huh, okay. Hey, Lauren? Yes. Um, what's the difference between classic and version six? And if we're relatively new to uh, post-processing, why wouldn't version six meet our needs? So, so uh, the reason, uh, so it might, it might. Uh, the one thing is if you buy a new camera, Lightroom won't know what that camera is and a lot of the work that it does, it just won't work. And if it's a new file type, it won't be able to read your files. Just flat out won't work. So that's the number one reason. Um, so if you've bought a camera in the last year and it's a brand new model, 
uh, the files in it probably will not be readable by Lightroom. Yeah, uh, mine's, mine's old, so I don't think I have that problem. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think you can get a, a, a DNG file. You export as a DNG. There's workarounds, but it's a lot of work. Is that a lot oh. of work? Is it? Oh. Seems like that's a universal fire format, so it should work, right? But but yes, but it's an extra step you have to go through to to import into Lightroom. Well, and, I mean, and then there are there are some nearly magical things that happen in Lightroom, which I'll show you several. Okay, that's the new, new happen now. I, got the old, I have version five, and I'm 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 fine with it so far. So, but I don't know what I'm missing. But you exactly you that's you don't know I'm you're here. Missing. I'm going to be like totally blown away, and I'll say I have to get it. I have to be a gnome of. Adobe and pay them every month. No, no, I don't want to do that. But we'll see. Yes. Open to. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> okay. Um, it, you know, it depends on your needs. You can get away with with uh, the older versions, but but at some point, you know, some point you're gonna buy a new camera, and then then you're out 150 bucks. But you know, whatever whatever works for you. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of things that happen in in this classic version that you just can't do in in the old version. So that's my recommendation. I, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, if you do all the work in the five or six and you do get a new camera, will any of those tags convert to the new one? Yes, you can always upgrade. So if, you, if you're if you working on a, a version five or version six and you go to classic or CC, you can import those photos uh, right into a new catalog and and okay. you'll be fine you're not gonna they're they're not gonna let you lose anything by doing that okay bye yes okay so uh, so uh, like i said before lightroom started out as a database program so if you think of lightroom kind of like the card catalog in an old library or a, a current library, it doesn't have to be an old library, in a library, a public library, say, you have the card catalog, which has all the little files that talk about your, your the books. And then separately, you have the books over on the shelves. Lightroom works essentially the same way. You create, when you start, you create a catalog. And uh, you can add as many photos to that catalog as you want. Now, one of the things that Lightroom does that, that uh, is tremendous is it never adjusts or manipulates your original photo, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's creating what they call a preview of your photo in Lightroom. So what you're looking at on, on the screen right now are not the original photos, they're preview versions, very small files that Lightroom has created. and they create what they call a sidecar file, which is a text file, which records uh, everything that you ever do to uh, your photos. So it's kind of like the card catalogs. Uh, uh, and I can remember uh, back in the old days, there used to be a, a little piece of paper inside the cover of the book. And whoever checked out the book wrote their name on that and they put it in the card catalog so they'd know who, who had it. And so you had a list of, you had a history of everybody who ever uh, read the book. Well, Lightroom keeps a history of everything you've ever done to that photo. So at any point, you can always go back into history. So the reason that is important is as I'm adjusting a photo, I'm not damaging my original photo. So I can make as many changes to it as I want. So, you know, if you think of like a, a Microsoft Word file, you create a file, you type some words in it, you save it, you close it, you open it up, you make some changes, you save it, you close it, you open it up the third time, you can't go back to that first version, right? It's gone. Lightroom doesn't work that way. So by creating the uh, catalog and then creating the, the uh, uh, preview and the text file with it, it makes it really, really fast. And so it's, it doesn't, the catalog doesn't, thus contain you know uh, uh, thousands of full-size images just little dinky ones which don't take up much space so if it, if it imported the full-size photo 
you'd have to have massive computing power to to run the thing. So, uh, so the the overall layout of Lightroom is um, uh, it has uh, three panels. So on the left side you have, and it changes with with the different modules. So it has a uh, 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 a nav in the navigator panel, then in the middle you see your images, then on the right you can make adjustments to them. So there are seven different modules within Lightroom. This one's called the library, and so it's where you do library work. This one is called develop, and this is where you make developmental changes to your photos. You can change the colors. We'll talk about some of that more in a minute. Uh, those two are tremendous, by the way, tremendous modules. There's a map module, which lets you, uh, if you have a GPS on your camera and, and it's recording the GPS location of your photos, it will plot that on a map for you. So you can see your photos based on map, on a map and you can add map coordinates to your photos. First question always comes from people saying, why would you wanna do that? Yeah. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> uh, I think, at, they haven't they haven't improved that in years so that's one of the things they came up with like hey we can do that we should and so they did and they haven't made many changes to it which means they know that nobody needs it either um, there's a book module where you can create books uh, that hasn't been updated in years either it's not really good so if you like to create photo books there are better places online like snapfish or something like that uh, apple's uh, book creator uh, doesn't do a bad job but but there's better places. Uh, the slideshow module lets you make slideshows out of your photos. So you select a group of photos, hit slideshow, hit play, and it will play a slideshow. Um, it, that, that is okay too, uh, but you don't have much control over them and, and there's, there's better ways of doing that. Um, the print module is where you print your photos. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a, in a minute, but uh, that is a great, a great thing. And then finally, there's a web module, which creates uh, ancient HTML web pages for you. So I think there's probably very, very few people on earth uh, using that part because it's just creating uh, HTML content and, and uh, nobody does that anymore. So, uh, so mainly what most people use is the library, the develop, and the print modules. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. So, when you are just getting started with Lightroom, you need to import your photos. Now, most things with Lightroom are uh, uh, very logical and, and make sense. The import is one thing that just doesn't make any sense because you're not really importing your photos. You're importing a preview of your photo. So this is one thing that confuses an awful lot of people is the import, but you need to import your photos. So, uh, there are, are several ways to do that. I prefer to uh, import my photos um, into Lightroom and at the same time copy them off of my, uh, my card that I took out of the camera and have it copy to a hard drive. So I store all of my photos in an external four terabyte hard drive and I work off of a laptop and my laptop has an external monitor, a large external monitor, so I can get quality color. So all the photos that I have ever shot digitally that are on one external hard drive and they're all within Lightroom. So right now in Lightroom, I have 60,863 photos, okay. So um, when I, when I, get done with a photo shoot, I take the card out of the camera, I put it into my computer, and I hit import. When I hit import, and I, do I have a camera handy? I don't have a card handy. So then I get a new screen. And this is one of the more confusing things for an awful lot of people. But it still is a three panel uh, set up and three steps to do it. So on the left side, you select your source. Where is that coming from? So when you put the card in the, in the, uh, in the slot, um, it will then show up and you say, okay, it's the, it's the untitled. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, let me just grab a camera, hang on a second. 
Sorry, I thought I had a card on the table here, but I didn't. Okay, so now when I put the card in, it's going to show up here on uh, the from side. So it's an EOS digital, and then if I include sub, so these are all the photos that are on the card. Uh, let me uncheck that. So, uh, so on the left side, my source is uh, EOS digital. That's where they're coming from. Then I have to decide what am I gonna what am I gonna do with those? Do I want to copy them? Do I want to move them? Or do I just want to add them or I can copy as a DNG? When I copy as a DNG, it converts it to uh, Adobe's digital negative format, which they're trying to make uh, uh, a standard and they're not succeeding too well with that. Uh, but it is fairly universally uh, read. So um, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of people will copy their pictures to the hard drive and then go to Lightroom and import them. An extra step. So a Lightroom will do both for you at the same time and make it pretty pretty painless. So I find it really really easy to uh, just tell them let's just copy them from my from my card and then put them someplace. Okay. So if they are uh, already on an, say an internal hard drive, you want to move them to an external hard drive, you click move and it will move, it will physically move them off your internal to an external or something like that. If they're already in your computer and you don't want to move them or copy them, you just click add and add, it will add them to your uh, catalog. Okay, so we, we know we're, we're coming from EOS Digital, we're going to copy them, then we have to tell it where we're going to copy it to. So my external hard drive is named Lauren Photos T4. So four terabyte T4. So that's where I put all my photos. So I wanna make sure that is selected. Okay. So again, we're going from, we're copying to Lauren Photos T4. And then I have uh, lots of options. I'm not gonna cover all of them now, but one of the more important ones that I make sure I have checked is don't import suspected duplicates that will keep me from having duplicate files on my hard drives and, and uh, that way I don't fill up the hard drive with, with unnecessary photos. So you can see when I check that, these pictures grayed out, meaning I had already imported them uh, into, into uh, Lightroom. This is what I shot the other night at, in New York. Okay, so just so we can see them better, I'll uncheck that. Um, I always add keywords to my photos right when I, right when I uh, import. So uh, keywords are, are things that, words that I will use to search to find my photos later on, okay? So uh, they are also known as metadata, and metadata officially is data about data, but uh, keywords adding at this point makes a whole lot of sense. So this was uh, uh, from a night workshop I did Saturday night in New York City. And so we we're at several different locations. Uh, so um, I, I would add at this point, keywords that cover all the photos that I'm looking at, all the photos that I wanna import. So it would be uh, New York uh, City, uh, NYC, because I might type that, uh, nighttime, night photography. So you'll notice when I start typing, words pop up. And those are previously used keywords that I've already I put in. When you start a new catalog, you don't get any like that. But as you, as you add more and more, your keywords will pop up. So it's going to have night photography workshop, uh, long exposures. They're all long exposures. There's long exposure. So that thing. So, so anything I can think of that covers all of these photos. Since they're at night, I know they're all long exposures. Now I want to tell it where I'm going to put it exactly within my Lauren Photos T4 external hard drive. So you have a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, you can have them import, you can have them uh, uh, sorted by date, stored by date. 
which if you look closely, you can see I started doing that. Uh, so by year, and you'll notice that in about uh, 2013, I stopped doing that. So from 98 to 2013, I, I stored by date. And the reason I stopped doing that is I couldn't remember when I shot anything. So it didn't do me any good to shoot it by date, right? To store it by date. Uh, so then I started creating uh, topic-based folders. And I still put my photos in topic-based photos folders, although there is absolutely no reason to do that. Um, there might be a reason, but there's not, there's not many. So since Lightroom is a database, if I'm sorting things physically and then using that physical sorting to find my work, I'm not using the database. I'm not using the computer for what it's really good for. I'm trying to remember, see, uh, let's see, those were night photos in New York. Did I store them under night or under, under New York? Don't know. So um, I, I have to admit that my, my old madness makes me still do things the way I used to sometimes. And so I still sort them in into folder, uh, individual folders uh, based on topics. How did you um, find them? Well, so the question is, how would I find them if I didn't do them that way? By keywords, and there's another couple of ways, which I'll show you in a, in a little while. So if I was starting all over, I would have one folder that said, Lauren's photos, and I would just dump everything into that and not worry about uh, anything else. I'm not worrying about the date because the metadata within the, within the uh, file itself knows the date. Uh, the keywords will know the topics, and, and we'll talk about some other things later on how to find them. But th there's, there's really, you know, you're not letting the database do its work if you're doing the work to try to find the photos. So, so even though I still uh, do that, I don't need to. So, so again, we're starting with uh, from EOS Digital, we're copying them to Lauren Photos T4, and I'm dropping them into a folder called New York. If I wanted to create a subfolder within that New York folder, I can come back up here and click into subfolder and uh, say uh, night photos in New York. And now down in the New York folder, it's going to have an italicized folder called night photos. And it's showing me that's where it's gonna go now because I told it to go into a subfolder. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna take the time to import these and, uh, and so, uh, anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah, I have all my photos in uh, several dozen uh, directories, folders. Okay. Can I copy them and basically say, put them in, create your own folders with this name and, and, and put them, or do I have to copy my pictures from one folder into another folder and, and create it and all that? Are they on an internal hard drive or an external? In internal. So you want to... Uh, um, They're all in a directory called photos, but under that directory, there must be 50 different folders. Okay, that, that's fine. Lightroom doesn't care where they are. It just needs to know where they are. Um, and you don't, you don't need to know where they are. You just need to care that Lightroom knows where they are. So if you were to get an external hard drive and just drag and drop those photos over to that hard drive before you import them into Lightroom, Lightroom will see them all. If you have imported them already and want to drag and want to drag them over to an external hard drive, you have to do that within Lightroom. And that's a little bit uh, more than I was gonna go into tonight on how to do that, but you need to know that you do not ever want to move a photo uh, physically uh, on your desktop once it's been imported into Lightroom because Lightroom will then say, I don't know where that is. Just like in, in the public library, when somebody put a book back, not where it belonged in the, on the rack, but put it on a shelf below where it belonged and hard catalog says, says, here's where that belongs. And you go over there, and it's not there. Well, okay. So if a librarian decided to re file that, renumber that and put it in a different place permanently, she went to the card catalog and, and scratched out the old location and, and wrote the new one in. So Lightroom is the same way. It needs to know, you know, it doesn't care that you move it, but it needs to know or else it's going to yell at you. 
and tell you, hey, I can't find that. Uh, please tell me where it went. So uh, know that you can, you can move them. Uh, uh, I don't have enough time to tell you how tonight. Okay. Okay. Hey, Lauren, this is yeah. Sally. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sally. Hey, um, quick question. So did you specify a catalog to import into? Um, one of the things I'm confused about is catalog versus collections versus folders within Lightroom. So I, I understand you okay. know, you're, you're um, picking the target folders for your actual photo, but I missed if you had selected a catalog. Okay. So the, the catalog is the same as the, the boxes holding all the the file cards in the library, right? In the, in the public library. Mm -hmm. You can only have one catalog open at a time. Okay. So you can't have multiple catalogs open at the same time. You can, you can have multiple catalogs, but there's really not much reason to do that because Lightroom will hold millions and millions of photos and not slow down because uh, of the way it's built. So, uh, originally, yes, I had multiple catalogs. Uh, I, 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 I kind of did one for every client and, and one for every type of, you know, I, I, uh, I had a pet photography studio, so I had a catalog for that. And I had a, you know, ev everything, I had a different, different catalog. Um, so then it became, uh, again, I had to think, what catalog is that photo going to be in? And so I would have to manually search for the picture. Now, all my photos are in one catalog. Like I said, there's over 60,000 photos in there. And um, there's, there's not much reason to create multiple catalogs. So if you have already created multiple catalogs, you can combine them fairly easily. And everything that you've done in one catalog will transfer to another. And so I would suggest creating a new catalog call it master catalog or something and put all your put everything into that import all your other catalogs right into that catalog wonderful thank you mm -hmm. I actually like to have two catalogs you know you like to have two catalogs well, that's fine it's, it's, well, nice. have, it's however you want to work but yeah, but if you have catalog multiple catalogs work. you're doing you're no, doing I have by the camera not by the topic so I have iPhone photos and I have my Olympus camera. So, so if you're out taking pictures with both, you have to open multiple catalogs to find your photos of that's true of the dog. But when when within seconds, if you had them all in one catalog and you wanted to see only the iPhone, you could do a search for iPhone and it pull up all your iPhone photos. Boom, that fast. All right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean I, I you know I some, some professionals still have multiple catalogs for different clients because they might show, they might pull up a catalog and show one client. And they don't want the client to see photos from other clients or something. Who knows? Um, you know, and if your workflow is that way, that, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you're, you're doing manual labor that the computer can do much faster. That's what it really comes down to. Okay. So rather than hit any other questions at this point. I have a question. It's John. Okay. Um, you said something earlier on about, oh, be sure you don't do duplicates. You don't want, or do you want, all five of the shots you t took into this master? Wouldn't you wait until you get the ones that are two that are decent that you really want to keep? Okay, good question. No, <laughs> Here, here's why. So, so, the, so the question was if you, if you take five pictures of the same thing, essentially, uh, why import all of them? Why not just the one that you, you want? Um, a, a, a couple of reasons why I don't work that way. Uh, it takes longer. Um, when I import, um, I, I import all my photos. And then the, the next thing I do is I go through every one of them extremely fast. And we'll talk about this in a minute and uh, delete the bad ones. Okay. And I can do it much faster uh, after I've imported them than before, okay. uh, unless I shot, you know, a, a thousand photos and I know there's only two good ones and I'm going to throw away 998 of them, then maybe I wouldn't. But, but even then I probably would uh, because I'm also able to see them better in the computer uh, full screen than I can either in the camera when I'm looking at it on the back of the, 
yeah. viewfinder or, or uh, as little thumbnails when I'm importing them. Yeah. So, um, but Lauren, this is Carolyn. To her point, I don't know who made that question. Um, so then we would not want to tick um, that do you not uh, import suspected duplicates and let it import everything so that you can eyeball what you want, correct? Okay, let me clarify what duplicates is. Duplicates are the same file name, same file number shot at the exact same time. Oh, That's gotcha. So if okay. you take five yep. pictures of, of uh, your favorite son, uh, those are not duplicates. Those are just similar. <laughs> so okay, if, so it's going to look at the metadata and say, oh, you already imported these like it did and gray them all out and say, no, you don't want to do that. I say, thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank you for having me clarify that. Hey, Lauren. Yes. When you import a number of pictures like, you, like the previous questioner asked about, and then you delete the ones you don't like. Are they deleted on your hard drive or just in the catalog? We'll talk about that in a moment, but, but you have the to your choice and your choice should almost always be delete from hard drive. Okay. Hi, this is, this is Glenn. Um, sorry, I, I kind of joined a little late and I don't have my video on, so I apologize. Um, but I, I believe on that question there, if you shoot in burst mode and you take a bunch of pictures at the same time that are very similar, I was looking at the docs. I think, it would, it's supposed to get rid of the dupes, even though it's the different no. file name. Can you confirm that? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. File name is the number one thing it looks at. So each file is going to have a different file name. Yeah. And then time. Nice. Yep. Uh, I'm Charlotte. Uh, for the person who had the iPhone pictures and the raw pictures or the good camera pictures, um, I have hundreds of thousands of pictures and I've organized them by number. Two is raw, three is JPEG, four is family, five is friends, six is my family. Anyway, what's happened is then you can't mix them. So if you keep them together, I think the map is important because if you want to travel and go back to that spot, you want to know where that is. So it may not be important most of the time, but your iPhone will always tell you where you took your good picture. So I now take iPhone pictures, finding out where my good pictures were taken just for that reason. So that's, and, and, and sometimes you do want to mix them. And so I name everything before I bring it in the Lightroom. I name everything in Photoshop because um, that's how I organize them so I can find them and then I can put the megadata on, a, on it. But that's why I would mix the two because that's, I was separating them and now I'm mixing them. Although the numbers are different. Um, Lauren, that brings up another good point. My camera, I always shoot in RAW and something else. It always sure. shoots two pictures. Yes. So it will import both of them because they are different files. Uh, okay. and, and it will only show you, the, the default option is to only show you the RAW file. So if you want, if you want to see the JPEG also, you have to go and tell it, show me both. Okay. And it will. But they're not duplicates. They're two different files. So the, the lady who's naming your photos beforehand, you're doing extra work. It might be working for you, but I'm just telling you, you're doing extra work that Lightroom would do for you. Because if you want to, if you want to just look for iPhone photos, it will, it will do that. Or if you want to look for photos that were shot with a 28 millimeter lens, it will pull up all your 28 millimeter lens photos right now in seconds. Um, so, I mean, if that's working for you, that's fine. Uh, but I'm telling you, you're doing extra work that, that, the, that the computer would do for you yeah, my, automatically my without problem, any extra steps. Yeah, I, my problem is I, I have like 30 terabytes of pictures back from 2005 and I don't know if they're duplicates, so I have to do it by date and topic and then find them out. And then uh, it just to do so much data that I didn't organize in the beginning that I have to sort of get rid of and then I can do, do this. But um, Lightroom will tell you if you have duplicate photos within the if if they're the same file names. No, they're not the file. See, that's the, they're all mixed up at this point. That's the yeah. Problem. Yeah. Well, I have I have uh, one person who I I mentor who had uh, 120,000 photos with no keywords on them, and she had absolutely no way to find any of them. Uh, which you know, she started off just you know just dropping things in and and not finding them. And uh, I told her you have to go in and keyword all of them. And uh, I, I showed her how to do it fairly quickly. And, and she would just sit in front of the TV with her husband each night 
you know, spend a couple hours each night keywording while watching TV, you know, and, uh, you know, within a month she had them all organized, you know, get, not could sit down and do it all at once, but, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a long-term process if you're, if you already have a, a lot of data like that. Um, so any other questions at this point? Okay. I used to work with a guy, the boss, the boss man who would say, uh, anybody have any questions? No, good. Thank you. Uh, so I, I try not to, I try to give a little bit of time between us. So, uh, again, we're, we're importing photos. So we're starting from, uh, the EOS digital card came from my camera. I'm going to copy them into my Lauren photos T4 hard drive. Then I hit import. And, uh, rather than take the time to do that, I'm just going to hit cancel and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's going to show you the previous import. So these are the last photos that I imported. Um, and, uh, these are all the 159, 150 photos, uh, that I shot uh, Saturday night at the, at the, uh, event. So what I do after I import is I call each one up one by one. And then I use my keyboard and hit, uh, the right arrow key, um, and go through each one. And there are several ways you can tag and, and, uh, uh, show different, different, you can do ratings. I'm sorry, I'm trying to say the word rating, which is hard for me. There are different ways you can rate them. So, uh, there's the stars. So you can give them one through five stars. I tried that. And then I couldn't remember if one star is better than five stars. What's a three star. What's a four star. Um, you know, uh, a five star hotel is better than a two star hotel, but I always want to be number one. So what, you know, I got confused by that. Then I went to the color ratings. And I grade them different colors. And I ended up with sticky notes hanging on my wall by my computer saying, blue means this, yellow means this, red, and I said, forget that. So what I do now is uh, it gets one of three things. It's either really good, okay, or trash, okay? It's got, you know, there's, you know, the, I had, you know, for years I had file cabinets full of slides and, you know, thousands and thousands of slides. And I hoped that by sitting in the dark, something would grow on them and make those pictures better. <laughs> didn't, nothing happened. Didn't, they didn't get any better. Same thing happens in digital. Sitting there, bad photo is not gonna get better. So if it's bad, I'm getting rid of, I'm deleting it. I'm, you know, I, I like I say, I have 60,000 photos in here. I could probably still throw away 10,000 that are, you know, I didn't call tight enough but I call them out pretty tight right away because, you know, um, if it's out of focus, it ain't never coming back into focus. That's what, just, that's just all there is to it. What's the point of rating? Well, so what, the question is, what's the point of rating them? Some people remember what five stars means. Some people don't. So what I do is I go through each one and if it's really good, I tap the P key on the keyboard, which means it's a pick. And that adds a white flag to it. So P is pick, and you'll see it flags it as pick, and it, and it turns on a white flag. If it's a horrible photo, and I know I'm never going to use it again, I hit the X key on the keyboard. And that gives it a black flag and sets it as rejected. So I can just fly through these photos right now, hitting my arrow key and say, uh, that's no good, X. Uh, that one I might be able to do something with. I'm not going to give it any rating because that one's only good. Uh, that one's just like the other one. The other one was better X. And, and I just literally flip through them that fast. Why rate them? So I can get rid of the, so the question is why rate them? So I can get rid of the bad ones. Yeah. If I give them a P, that means they're really good. I'm going to come back to those and, and work on them. And if they're in the middle, I'll come back and look at them harder later. But I can immediately get rid of uh, all the bad ones right away. Mm -hmm. So once I've imported all the photos, uh, will the photos show up over here um, under all photos? So uh, this side shows me a preview first. In the middle, it shows me the photos either in uh, as a grid, and I can change the size of the grid down here, the thumbnails, and have lots or or not many. Um, or if I uh, double click on a photo, it comes up as a full screen. Um, and then I 
I click again, it goes back to the grid. So if I'm looking, so when I'm doing the, the uh, one at a time, that's when I'm flipping through and, and uh, uh, giving them my, my P or X or OK. So if I double click now and go back to the, the grid mode, as I scroll down here, uh, we'll see these are photos that I really did edit the other night. And so the ones that have a black flag on them are grayed out. So you can visually see right away, those are the ones you flagged. Uh, the ones with the white flag have the white flag on them. Now you'll, you might notice some of them have a yellow border around them. So I, I have incorporated uh, adding yellow because there is a way uh, within Lightroom to uh, have um, Instagram, hope everybody's following me on Instagram. If you're not, it's for Lauren Photos. Uh, follow me on Instagram uh, so I can, I can export straight out of Lightroom to my Instagram account, which is really cool. So I add a yellow tag to the ones that I've sent to Instagram so I can visually immediately see which ones are on Instagram already. So, uh, and that's the only color I use. What do you, when you said R on Instagram? How, how so, so there's a plugin, there's an extra thing you can add that will, that, will imp, that will export photos right to your Instagram account and put them on your Instagram. Uh, you can also do it to, well, you can't do it to Facebook anymore. They turned it off. Facebook didn't want to do it, didn't want to play anymore. Um, uh, uh, Smug Mug, uh, 500 PX, almost everybody online has a plugin for Lightroom to make it really easy for you to send your photos to that, except Facebook. They, they this summer said, we don't want you to do that anymore because they're Facebook. Um, so, so now as I scroll through, you can see these are the photos I looked at before and those are the gray ones are the bad ones. And so uh, at, at this point in my editing, I'm getting rid of those right away. And so I just go up under photo, come all the way down to delete rejected photos. And this is gonna answer a question that was asked before. And it's gonna make sure, do you really wanna do this? because you said delete. So then it says, do you want to remove? And if you remove, you're only removing them from the catalog and you're, you're leaving them on your hard drive. So the other option is canceled, but delete from disk. So it's going to remove it from the catalog and it's going to delete the original off of your hard drive. Now to me, the only worst thing than keeping a whole bunch of bad photos is keeping a whole bunch of bad photos and not knowing that you have them. And so if, you, if you're taking them out of Lightroom and you don't have any other way of, of keeping track of them, you're filling up your hard drives really fast with a bunch of bad photos that you don't know what they are, where they are, why they are. So, so it should always be delete from disk. Um, again, that takes a few seconds, so I'm not gonna bother doing that right now. But uh, if you click delete from disk, it will totally wipe them out, which is what, what is highly, highly recommended. I have a question. Um, if you're working up a hard drive, will it say delete from hard drive? No, no, it calls all, all hard drives disks. So okay. it doesn't matter if it's an in, internal hard drive or external or or if you happen to have a thumb drive and you're plug you have you stored it on there for some reason. No matter what it, it delete, calls a disk. Does it delete it from the camera disk? No, it does not delete it from the camera disk. How do you do that on camera? So the question is, does it delete from the camera disk? Uh, uh, how do you do that? Y yes, I always reformat in the camera. Okay. So I, I never delete a photo in the camera. Two bad things can happen. One, uh, rarely, but it happens, it will corrupt your card. Yeah. That can corrupt your card. The other bad thing that happens much more is the button on most cameras for delete one photo is right beside the button or the, or the same button as delete all. Mm -hmm. Why do I know that? Yes. <laughs> right. So I never delete anything in the camera unless I've run out of cards and uh, there's something else to shoot and, and that card's full and then I'm extremely selective and careful. Uh, but hopefully that never happens. But, you know, things do. Hey, Lauren, can you show us one more time how to reject a picture? Yes. You, you, you 
click on the photo and tap the X key on the keyboard. Or you can come down here and click on the black flag itself, but the X key on the keyboard is the quickest way. Okay. So, click on a photo, hit X, black flag appears. When you click off the photo, the, the photo becomes gray. If you want to unclick it, you can just click on the X in the photo and, and, it, and it unselects it as a, as a rejected photo. Or if you've rejected a photo and then you decide, wait a minute, that's really a good photo. It's a pick. If you tap the P, it takes off the white flag and puts on the, or it takes off the black flag and puts on the white flag for you. So, so Lightroom knows about P and X. They're, that, that's their symbols, not just yours. That's, yeah, that's Lightroom's. They came okay. up with this. Okay. Yes. This is not my system. <laughs> I wish I came up with it. No. Um, they, yeah, that's the, the PNX is, is built right into Lightroom. Where did the numbers come from? So the numbers up here are, are your file numbers based on how many pictures you have in your catalog. So, uh, okay. So, uh, I'm seeing a question online. So there is a, a you know, tonight we're, we're, we're talking, uh, I'm, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything there is to cover about Lightroom. So there are lots of things that I'm just glossing over really fi fast. Uh, one of them is there's a way to turn on uh, auto advance. So when you, when you hit uh, X or P, it'll automatically go right to the next photo and you don't even have to bother hitting the keystroke on the keyboard. Uh, that, that is good and, and sometimes it gets annoying for me. So uh, sometimes I turn it on, sometimes I turn it off. But yes, you can, you can auto advance it. Um, yes, we will talk about collections also. So let's see if there's any other questions coming in over text. Okay. So uh, at, at this point, now I go in and add additional keywords to the photos after I've imported because I, right away I want to add keywords so I can find these photos later and I try to do it as soon as I import while it, the photos are fresh in my mind and I know what the hell they are. So uh, these I didn't do yet. So like uh, this photo and these four are all of lily pads in a, in a fountain in Central Park. So if I click on the first one, hold down my shift key, click on the last one, I can select all of those photos and I can add keywords to all of them at the same time since they're the same subject, I'll probably have the same keywords on them. So now over here on the right in the keyword box, I can add uh, water, I can add fountain, if I can see the spell. Uh, I already got that. Don't need that again. Thank you. Uh, whatever I might add. So I can do that. And then when I hit enter or return on the keyboard, it's going to add those keywords to all of them. So again, if I want to add, so here's pictures of a fountain. Uh, so uh, statue. It helps if you spell things right. Because if you don't, you'll know it. Uh, water fountain. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Anyway, so I can add all those keywords. I can, you know, so I try to, at this point, get as specific as I can. Uh, I should have had Central Park. So all these are shot in Central Park. So I can put Central Park on, you know, do, dozens of them at a time. Is there a way to see the keyword on the slide? So, yes. So, so the question is, is there a way to see the keyword on each photo? So if you click on a photo, the keywords all show in this box over here on the right. Oh. Okay, and there's a, a list of all the keywords you've ever used. So if you want to use that keyword again, you know, uh, Angel Oak, and it shows you how many times you've used that keyword also. And if you want to do a fast search by the uh, keyword, so say astrophotography, if you click on, on, the, on the box, it will show you all your astrophotography photos. So any, any, you know, any keyword. Wow, what is that one? 
<laughs> I have zero. I don't know what it is. So um, that will that will quickly show you by keyword all the photos that you've ever done using that keyword. Pretty crazy, huh? Did you put a person's name? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. If, so you bet. So I can I can uh, at any point search. Uh, so you don't use any titles. Don't keywords. don't use any titles. So you don't title the photos. Uh, so the question is, don't do I title the photos? Uh, uh, I do, but only uh, um, when do I title the photo? O only as a finished uh, image when I know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, because it, it, when you're when you're so if I want to find we talked about barns with the other one. So I do, I can do a command or control on windows F just like in, in word command F and type the word barn, hit enter. There's all my barn photos that I've ever shot. So down here on the bottom, it's telling me that there is 777 barn photos out of 660,000. So I have 777 barn photos. So it's like, wow, what are you doing with all of those? How do you, how am I going to get through that? Well, you can come down here on the bottom and sort by many different things, including pick, which remember that was the P. Mm. So now when I do that, all of, all of my favorite barn photos that have a white flag on them come to the top. So now they're in chronological order after they've, so the that first sorts them by the pick and then chronological order. So my, my newest pick is that photo. And my oldest one would be however far down. Okay. Can you have subfolders, the folders that you could do um, Africa and then you could do lion, elephant, blah, 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 underneath that? Like in Photoshop, you can do sub, you know, folder under folder. I'm sorry, I barely heard that question. Can you have subfolders of each keyword? Can you have subfolders of each keyword? You can you can type in multiple, so I can I can do barn and and winter. Um, yeah, I, I'm thinking so, so I I find yes. Yeah, so you can do. So re remember, it's a database. So as long as anything, it, it's searching for absolutely anything that you want to search. So. Uh, I, I, I know my question is: Is under keywords, can you write Africa, and then under Africa, write elephant, kangaroo? I mean, not kangaroo elephant lion so that you can do it them underneath each other like in photoshop you can do sub sub names you can have keywords with other keywords under it well there you don't need to because it will search all of that for you so so um uh, back to my my uh central park photos um uh, well, let me unsort the let me, let me hit one. Um, I could have Central Park and then I could have uh, Pond. I could have uh, uh, Square. I could have uh, uh, Bride, you know, uh, Scenery. Um, and so uh, I, as I type in the keywords, I separate them by commas. So they're not a string. So you they separate each one. And then when you want to, do a search later. So if you're doing Africa and lions and you're doing Africa and elephants, you can either just search on elephants. If, if you know elephants in Africa is the only place you ever shot an elephant, then that's where it's going to, it's going to pop right up. But if you've shot elephants in, in India and Africa, and you want to only find your Africa elephants, you just type Africa space elephant in the search and it'll pull up only the ones that are keyworded with both of those. Okay. Is that, and, and the metadata from Photoshop does not go to Lightroom. The metadata from Photoshop is not. Uh, some some is, keywords is not one of them. Okay, well that's the one I want. Okay. Thank yes. You. I'm I'm fairly certain. The easy way to do is import one and see, but I don't believe keywords comes over, because keyword keywords are not a metadata file within the uh, a photo file itself. A lot of other things are. So for instance, your camera, when you take the picture, records, every camera does, 
uh, what kind of camera it was, what camera it was, what lens you're using, what focal length you're on, what time it was, uh, 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 your f-stop, your shutter speed, if you used a flash. So all that is metadata that is recorded that is part of your photo file. All of that is searchable in Lightroom. So, you know, if I want to find all the photos that I shot with a flash, I can do that within seconds. Or if everything that I shot with a 100 millimeter lens, I can pull all those up in, a, in a, you know, in no time. Um, so, hey, well, are you saying, Lauren, that the keywords are only Lightroom? Um, you can only see them in Lightroom, and they're not going to, of course, be on your master um, photo, which is stored on your hard drive. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, so hey, Lauren. Banned in Lightroom in the future. If Amazon comes out with a better product, um, you're screwed. So the question, the question here locally is, if if you abandon Lightroom in the future and go to something else, uh, odds are you're screwed. Uh, but you'd have to think that if somebody comes up with something better, they're going to figure out a way to import all those keywords with it because they know everybody's been using them. So, so uh, you know, Adobe's not going anywhere. You know, I mean, that's just that's just a fact, and, and they're going to do whatever they can to stay on top. So, I mean, if somebody comes along with something better, you know, they're going to, whoever's coming along with something better is going to figure out a way to import keywords. That, that's just, you know. Uh, question online about whether we're going to get the basic editing. Yes, absolutely. Um, real, real soon here. Um, so, just one of the other really great things about uh, the organizational abilities of Lightroom is a thing called collections. And uh, collections are basically baskets where you can add photos to uh, based on whatever you want. And you, you can have, so I have lots of different collections, but I don't have too many because if I get too many, then I'm manually doing the searching again rather than letting the power of the computer do it. So um, I have a, a, a fall foliage collection. Um, so, so typically when I go to do a trip, so I have a, a travel sub collection. So here are my, my picks from France. So when I go to France, these are my favorite ones. So I, I uh, do that. Here's an Italy picks. So these are my favorite photos from, from Italy, uh, Oregon, whatever. Um, and so any way that you want to, you can create a collection and, 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 um, uh, so dog photos. So here's some some dog photos that I created a collection of. So you just create a new collection and you can drag photos into them. You can also create what they call smart collections, which automatically add images to that collection based on any data that you want to use. So uh, so here's a smart collection. A smart collection has this little icon down here in the in the bottom. You, you might be able to see. You might not. And so uh, if I right click and come down to edit smart collection you can see that uh, this one is just doing a pretty simple search for all searchable text that contains the word Arial so I have Arial in the key in the key words and it will then as I shoot more Arial photos automatically put those photos in into the Arial's uh, collection so I have a lot of collections for a workshop. So when I'm doing a workshop, I, I have a collection that I've selected photos and, and I've, I've put them into there. Uh, the beauty of collections is, you know, you, you can just boom right now without even having to type anything, find your, you know, your favorite F Florida photos or however, however you want to search. I mean, you can, you can do, you know, it, it doesn't have to be subject based. It can be absolutely anything based, however you want to, Add photos, you know your favorite red photos if you want. What you know, however you want to, however you want to sort them. So the collections are just a really easy and quick way to create a collection of photos based on whatever, whatever way you want to collect them. But I don't, you know, I've I, I've met people who create a collection for everything they shoot. So you know, and then then you end up with three or four hundred collections. Well, then you're manually going through them to find your photos again, you know. So you really want to let the computer do the work that the computer is meant to do. So uh, here's a, a collection of my favorite photos from 2017, you know. So uh, 
you know, that's a fun way to quickly find the 81 photos that, that I decided I liked from 2017. You know, at the end of the year, I'll go through my picks from 2018 and, and see which ones were my favorite of the picks and add them to that collection. You know, I could add, I could add those keywords to each individual one and then type in 2017 favorites and, and, you know, those pictures would come up, but it's just a lot faster to create a collection, drag the photos in. So if a photo is in a collection and you no longer want it in there, all you have to do is click on the photo. Uh, which one do I want? That one's not too exciting. Click on the photo, uh, hit delete on the keyboard and it's deleted from the collection, but it's still in the catalog. It's not deleted at all. It's just taken out of the collection. Mm -hmm. So if you add some that you don't really want to be in the collection, you just take them out and you know you can, just, you can look at them pretty quick. Lauren, hi, it's Lynn. Yes. Um, when you say the computer does the, does the work for you when you're looking for a picture, you at least have to tell the computer what the keywords are for what you're looking for? Yes. And, you, and that's done by you putting the keywords on each picture when you import them? Exactly. You have to add keywords to the photos at some point. Okay. And I think Thank it's you. best to do it as soon as you can, because if you're like me, you'll forget. And then, then you have pictures hanging out there uh, that don't have any keywords, but right. you can create a smart collection that set, that does a search for images with no keywords and it will show you all your images that don't have any keywords. Then you can go back in and add keywords to those. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. Any questions on collections? I want to, I want to spend a little time here with the develop module. Okay. So, uh, let me go back to the collection I have for Lightroom demo. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, let me just go to the develop module I click there or I can hit D on my keyboard. I'm going to reset this one. No, I'm not. I like the way I did that. I don't want to ruin it. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me just do something here. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. Well, just, but Lauren, yeah. you could. Yes. Yeah, so I, I just made a, a, what's called a virtual copy. And so what that does is within Lightroom, it makes a copy of it. And so as I make changes to the virtual copy, it doesn't change the first Lightroom copy of it. Now remember, neither one of them are changing my original. So I can make as many virtual copies as I want. So if I have different versions of the photo, I can, I can uh, make all those, all those changes to it. And, and uh, then I'm, I'm uh, in good shape. Uh, but again, I don't want to have too many virtual copies going around because, you know, clutter, clutter. So this one's telling me it's, it's copy two. I'm just gonna turn that off so we can see it a little bit better. So now that I'm in the develop module, you'll see on the left side, we still have uh, uh, the collections, but we have some other things that happened. We have some presets. So if you, uh, some presets come with the photos. Um, so uh, if you wanna just try some different things that, that uh, preset comes with Lightroom, these are, these are uh, uh, come with the, with the program. So as I roll my mouse over, you can see it making changes to the photo, and it's also showing them up here in the navigator as I, as I do that. You can, you can download presets that people have made and given away. You can buy presets that do all kinds of fancy things. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of presets because uh, I, I like to think my images are individual and not cookie cutter. But, but you know, you can try them and see what they're doing. You know, that's, you know, all kinds of wacky things are happening to them. To the, through the presets. Now, um, let me add a couple presets so I can have some history. So we'll try that, we'll try that, we'll try that, okay. So now we see here under the history, this is everything it's, I've done to this photo since I made the virtual copy. So I can always go back to whatever settings I want, my original, original that came with the virtual copy. That's the way I ended up toning it. So uh, here within the history, you, you have a total absolute history forever and ever. Uh, collections are the same thing that we saw back in the library. So the, that's all the same. So again, here in the, in the middle now. Lauren? Yes. How can you make a virtual copy? 
Good question. Uh, uh, back in the library, if you right click on a photo, come down to create virtual copy. Or it's up under uh, photo, create virtual copy. So is that the same feature as doing Command J in Photoshop? Like when you make a copy of the image before you start doing any editing? Command J. No. Does that. Com Command J is a layer. Command, yeah, Command J, J is making a layer. Yeah, it just, it just creates a copy of your, of your image. So you're not working on your original image. No, is, it's, is not, it's not. Virtual is that. different. It's, it's, in Photoshop, it's not doing that. It's creating a new layer for you. So if you save that photo as anything other than a Photoshop document, uh, you can't go back. This is creating a, a, a new preview image, so you can always go back. Okay. So as long as in Photoshop, yes, if you create a new layer, you can then go back as long as you're still having that file as a Photoshop document. Right, okay. So similar, very similar, but different. <laughs> because they're working totally different. You know, in Photoshop, if you, if you make a change to a photo and you haven't saved it as a smart preview uh, and you go back into the image uh, and then open it up again and make another change, you can't go back to the first version, you know, unless you did layers. So, so there's workarounds, but Lightroom, you don't have to do the workaround. So... Uh, here in the develop module, uh, now we have a lot of controls on the right that have changed. And, and this is where the real power of, of, uh, of, of Lightroom is, you know, the, the developing part, it all happens here. So if I decided that my exposure was too low here, I can just brighten it up, which uh, hopefully isn't what I usually do. Um, this one, I wanna make the shadows brighter. So I'll just go into shadows and, and open up the shadows, uh, the highlights, oops, I went, to, I hit the wrong one. Um, I was wondering why the shadows didn't open up for me. There they go. So now we're, we're opening up that shadow. So, uh, you know, one of the interesting things when I first started working with Lightroom is I didn't want to go all the way. You know, I thought, ooh, all the way, that has to be bad. It's not, you can go all the way. You know, so, so this one I, I can uh, open up the, make the shadows brighter and make the highlights a little darker. Uh, I love a solid black in a photo, so uh, so I always move my blacks black. Uh, there's a thing called uh, clarity, which adds contrast to the midtones, which is a strange concept if you ever worked in a dark room. So I can I can adjust the clarity, which makes it look sharper, but it's not really doing that. Uh, the dehaze is uh, this is one of those things that is not in uh, version six, and it is worth the money on its own. Uh, it will take the haze out of a photo. Uh, let me see if I've got a hazy photo in this grid. Well, if I reset one of these. Um, so uh, just on this photo, if I go dehaze, look what that sucker's doing. So if you shoot mountains that are hazy in the, in the, in the you know, yeah, hazing thing, it'll just, pulls the haze right out of them. It's, that is just an amazing tool. Um, so I can pump up the clarity, make my blacks blacker. Uh, this one again, I want my shadows to be a little bit brighter. I missed, uh, make my highlights a little bit darker. Um, then I can add some vibrance. Vibrance makes the colors, I hate to say the word, more vibrant, but it makes them brighter. Uh, and then saturate, saturation, makes them more intense, more uh, rich. And saturation is the place that way too many people do way too much saturation. You know, um, there are no numbers that are, you know, how, how much is too much saturation? Well, it's all season to taste. Whatever you like is what it does. Uh, you know, however you like your photos, you know, mine, mine are different than yours and you know, how I see them and how I want them are, Completely different than anybody else but uh, I can just say if you're doing landscapes and you want to do a fairly realistic interpretation of what you saw be careful on that saturation because you'll make them look 
like a circus clown real quick. So Yvonne, if you aren't sure what some of these terms meant, you can term it, but uh, is there a help, uh, help desk? So the question is, is there uh, help uh, available for uh, what each of these do? Um, I have to answer, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, but, but, but the beautiful thing is, remember, it's not ever destroying your original. So you can just try things, and if it looks bad, you know, and you can't remember what you did, you just go back into history, back down to, you know, back down to here you know, or just back it off. So on any of these, if you've slid them and you can't get them back to zero exactly, if you double click on the name, it will zero it back out to where you started. So you that's double a, click? A nice little shortcut. Where did you double click? Right on the name, whatever the clarity or vibrance or whichever oh, one, okay. Okay. you know, no, if you no, made no. your shadows too dark, double click. You can also double click on the little slider thing, but it's harder to hit. So you just double click right on the, on the name there. I have a question. Can you do more, if you have a series of the same picture, can you change all of it at the same time with the same controls? Absolutely. Kind of. No, not kind of. Absolutely. So what you do is, you, you may have noticed that this is a series of pictures. You, you make the adjustments to one. So this is the first one. Then uh, I, I click on that one. I hold down my shift, select that one. And now I come down here in the bottom. It says sync. Oops, I'm, in, I'm not in the develop module. Sorry, got to be in the develop module. So I have to do that on the film strip down here. So I have them all selected. So on the bottom in the develop module, and I can make that bigger so you can see it, as I like to say, more better. Hope my wife didn't hear that. Um, so if I click on the first one, hold down my shift key, select them all, click on the last one. Now when I hit sync, it brings up a, a, a menu which says, which ones of those things that you changed do you want to change? If you just want to do them all, you can just check all, which I find normally is what I do. Uh, but there might be a time where, who knows, maybe you straighten one of them that you don't you don't want to. So if you're taking a lot of portraits in the light, you adjust one one synchronize. So then when I hit synchronize, you'll see the colors go pop, 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 change on all of them that quick. And it doesn't matter how many photos you have. It could be thousands. If you shot them all exactly the same, boom. And the reason it does it that quick is it's not working on the originals, it's working on the previews. And so, so uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. What is auto synchronize? Go back to the barn you were working on. Let me, let me answer the question online. What is auto synchronize? Yeah. Auto sync. Where do you find auto sync? At the bottom right where it says sync and reset. Uh, yes, if you, there's a auto sync, if you touch the little, little switch to the left of that bar. Yeah. Hey, they just added that too. No, that's in my version five. That's in your version five? Yes. Hmm. Okay. I, I don't know what that So does. the answer to that is, I don't know. Because okay. I not, I missed that. Maybe because. <laughs> I'm guessing it sync, syncs it automatically, but. Maybe if you select, let me see. We select one and make some changes to it. So let's just do something crazy so we can see that. Uh, I don't know. Yep, oh, yep, that's what it does. So if you have them all selected, if you have uh, six photos selected, say, and you make changes to one, it will automatically change all of them on the fly at the same time. I think thought that's that what the sync was. Yeah. Yeah, cool. If and you hit reset, will it change all of them? If you have the auto set, auto sync on, I'm sure it will. Ah. Yep. Gotcha. Great. Thanks for pointing that one out. Something I missed. Uh, Warren, can you go back to your uh, barn that you were working on? the copy i'd like to see how you got the one on the left oh so so uh this is a this is a black church in iceland mm -hmm. so if you if you see I, I made quite a bit of changes to this so i i went with shadows opened the shadows up darkened the highlights a little bit uh, surprised i didn't add any black to it 
I've pumped up the clarity, wonked on the dehaze, fibrance, and just a little bit of saturation. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, there's other things that you can do also. So let me come back to this one and show you. So if you, if you say you want to just make the, the ground lighter and not make the whole picture lighter, you know, if I, if I would just change the exposure on the whole thing, you know, everything gets lighter. Mm. But so that's not good. So uh, on the top, there are some things that let you make local adjustments rather than global adjustments to your photos. So this one's called the uh, uh, graduated filter. And so I click on graduated filter, then I click on the photo and drag, and the direction I drag creates a graduated filter. And the farther the lines are apart, the softer that filter will be. So I'm gonna go real extreme so you can see what, what it's doing. So as I put those closer together, you can see that's a harder line. So um, let me move it up a little bit, and I'm gonna unextreme it, there we go. So um, anything above this line, it doesn't do anything to at all. From this line to the middle is 0% uh, uh, to about 75%. Uh, From this line to this line is 75% to, uh, I'm sorry, 25, 75% to 100%. So you can see, that below the bottom, it's it's adjusting the picture, but it's not adjusting it uh, up on top. So if I want to open the shadows up even more, I can do that and just adjust the bottom part of the picture. Mm. Now, there are gonna be times when you don't want to adjust everything in the bottom part of the picture. So there is, uh, so what this is actually doing is creating a mask, a mask overlay. And if you check this box, you can see what the mask is covering. Mm -hmm. And so whatever is red right now is what will be adjusted. Mm -hmm. So if I don't want this part of the picture to be in there, I can just come up and click on brush uh, and erase. And I'm going to check auto mask. And wherever I start clicking, you can see my cursor is a minus sign. It's going to erase the mask oh, wow. over that part of the picture only. It's really cool. That is amazing. So now, when I turn off my show, uh, say I did a uh, color change down there. It doesn't change the church, just everything else that is masked off. So uh, with some practice, you become very good at doing uh, masks like that, or you can do a selective mask and say so you just wanted to do this door. Um, so if I hit auto mask, and now I'm, I'm, let me turn on my mask so we can see what's happening here. And when I click on the door, you'll notice my cursor is actually going over the black part, but it's not masking it because I told it to auto mask and it, it knows that whatever color, or not color, it's whatever tonal value that I started on to mask only that tonal value. Mm -hmm. So now I can make that door, uh, much brighter if I want, and it doesn't affect the rest of the photo, just that local area. Wow. So using, and there's a couple other similar tools up here, using those tools in that way, you can really go in and fine tune your images and make just certain parts of them pop. So if I come back over here to my final one and I click on my, my graduated filter, you see I created one here that, that I worked on the top and I made the highlights a little brighter for the sky. I changed the color temperature down, made it a little bit bluer. I pumped up the clarity again up there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that just really makes that image pop even more. Now I could clean up the door a little bit. Now I'm looking at it. I'm gonna have to go back in. Well, I should make that door a little bit wider. Little yeah. Yeah, Iceland they have these crazy, I don't know how many there is, not a lot, five or six, churches that they painted black and uh, started as, I guess, uh, they used pitch from uh, ships because uh, they all seem to be right on the ocean and, and threw pitch on them to protect them, I guess. But now they keep painting them black to, for historic value and they're so damn cute. And when I was there in August, um, uh, that's the third time this year I, I went to this church because it's so cool. Uh, there was a wedding going on 
and, and it got a real cool shot of the bride walking up uh, the little little black church but it's, it's a fun place can, anyway can you show how to extend the let's say that you want to extend the that part of the picture a little bit over to the left so the question is can i show how to extend the picture to the left no you can't do that in lightroom that's a Photoshop thing. So when I said 15% of the pictures, so if I wanted to add more for some reason to this, this yeah. side of it, okay. I'd have to go into, into Photoshop and do that. Yeah. Um, Lightroom will, will do uh, uh, some, some minor, uh, let, me get to, let me go back to the grid and get in my other Lightroom. Some minor um, uh, cleanup of, of an image. Mm -hmm. There's the photo I want. I went past it. Sorry. Um, so it'll let you say you have some power lines in a picture that you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm in the wrong file still. Come on. Well. Either I'm scrolling too fast, trying to hustle here, or, well, let's just do that. Um, oops, wrong photo. What happened? I clicked on the wrong one. Where'd my flowers go? Click, develop, thank you. So say you didn't want these flowers down here in the corner, mm -hmm. um, or they were dust spots, you can, you can use this to, eliminate actually that's a pretty big spot so say these little yellow ones there you can just get rid of spots like that you know if you wanted to get rid of this whole tree you better go to photoshop to do that but mm -hmm. but uh you know if you have dust spots in the sky or something like that um it will it will uh clean those up for you pretty quick or say let's let's blow this up a little bit say this little piece of grass you didn't you didn't want that grass sticking up there mm -hmm. You know, you can just come in here and with with the uh, spot removal tool, mm -hmm. and it'll get rid of that for you real quick. Okay. Um, one of the other cool things that you can do is uh, let me see where I'm at here. Let me get back to my file that I wanted. Uh, let me reset that one. Is turn them into a black and white. So that's a color photo that I started with. Come on, back to full size. Um, and, you know, we don't really think about what colors are making up a black and white, but you can, uh, you know, this one, rather than just making her skin darker uh skin has a lot of orange in it so if i come down to the orange mixer and darken the orange i can make her look really bad really fast but i can just add some some tone to her skin in black and white or actually this one i'd probably just drop the highlights down a little bit and, and uh, open up my shadows and uh add some clarity the white piece above her shoulder there so the, how would you deal with that so how the uh, question is how would i deal with the white piece above her shoulder me i'd crop it out boom right like that so this is the crop tool so it lets you mm -hmm. you, you know you can crop them any way you want what if you and, wanted to keep her shoulder is there any way to get rid of that white is there any way to get rid of that white not in lightroom not too easily that's mm -hmm. another thing i'd take to photoshop i'd get rid of that pretty easy uh, but, um, but you know, some some photos are made for color, and and uh, you know, the Lightroom this is one subscription of, comes with Photoshop. Lightroom and subscription you, comes with Photoshop. Jump into Photoshop. Okay, how do you? So the question is, how do you jump to Photoshop? This is probably a good time to say that. So, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So if I right click uh, on the photo, I come down to Edit in Adobe Photoshop. And that will take you right over to Photoshop. Uh, that will open the photo in Photoshop very quickly, kind of quickly. And then uh, as you make edits there, 
uh, it's, it is now creating a copy of your original photo. So it has now copied your original photo. It is uh, making a Photoshop file. You make changes to it in Photoshop. Come on. I might not have wanted to do this because the Zoom program that I'm using eats up a lot of processor. So I'm going get to get out of this really quick. So uh, if, I, if I wanted to get rid of that uh, white thing, I would just do a quick content aware fill. We'll see. I'll see if I bring my computer to its knees. Can't see what I, okay, I'm good. What is that filling it with? It's filling it with content around it. So content aware in, in Photoshop actually looks at what's around the, whatever you selected and I am bringing my computer to its knees and then fills it in. So you can see it kind of faked, got fooled by the shoulder there, yeah. but it did a great job up there. I so I would have done that in two pieces. So I didn't do that. Oh. So now when I, when I save this and I'm doing using keyboard commands and quitting, so I don't have to, so I can get out of Photoshop as quick as I can and not kill my computer because it's crying. I can hear it crying. Too much going on. Come on, quit that Photoshop. Okay, now back in Lightroom, it has made that duplicate of that photo for me automatically. So I, I have it right back there in Lightroom again. It is something. On your hard drive as well? Yes, so it makes a copy wherever the, wherever the original was stored, it, it stores the, uh, the duplicate. That's amazing. So here's a good one. So whatever this is, is showing up down here. I'm obviously used this in a, in a uh, workshop before. So you can see all the little dots that were down there. So if I have some little dots I want to get rid of, I can just click there, click there, get rid of the extra splashes. So each one of these dots is a, uh, a spot that I did before. Now, you know, almost everything in Lightroom is the same in Mac and Windows, except for probably the most important thing. When you delete something like this in a Mac, you get a, a little puffy cloud and that cool sound. Poof. Windows, you don't. So that's reason enough to buy a Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, where'd my building go? That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Let me get back to back to my church here. So uh, a lot of times when you shoot with a wide angle and you're shooting architecture, um, you get distortion. So you can come down to uh, first lens correction, which will straighten up for the lens, and then uh, the transform area. And let's see what auto does with this one. Boom, that's pretty good. So now, you know, that's not bad. Let's make it a little bit more. So we're straightening up the, the verticals. So now it doesn't look like things falling over. Because mm -hmm. even though it's old, it's not falling over. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one of, the, one of the other great things uh, there. So a question online, can you move a version six installation to another machine? Uh, you'd have to have either the, the uh, disc, if you, if you bought a disc and you could install it there, or you have our, uh, whatever file you downloaded and, and saved and open it up in that. Uh, at some point, as the operating system on your computer gets newer, it won't work with the old version of uh, version six or five also. So as your computer upgrades, it won't, it won't like the older versions of at some point. I don't know. Uh, I don't use windows much anymore. So I don't know how, how they're doing with the windows 10 and the old versions, but, but uh, as you, as, as that moves up, but there's no problem in moving the catalog itself. You just copy it over. Uh, so if you have it on a, if you have your catalog on a thumb drive or, or something, you can just, put the catalog in there, but you have to have the program there also. 
Are you saying there's no copy protection on it? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, you can use it on two two machines. So this so this version and also the the old one. Uh, I'm pretty sure version six and five will only let you work on two different computers with it. Okay. But but you know this this version the the classic the CC classic, you know you could have it on a laptop and a desktop, or or two laptops or whatever. Uh, the CC version, if you have 13 computers, you can use it on 13 computers. So that's one of the advantages of CC. But okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously there's lots more that I could show you and, and, and things to do, but that's pretty much the basics of what Lightroom does. Um, you know, you know in a, again, a photo like, sorry, I didn't mean to click there, a, a photo here that, that I've messed up pretty good. You know, I can just go in and change the saturation on, on the blues too. Let me change, you know, I can change the color temperature. So let's just make this thing a little bluer overall. I'm gonna overdo it. I'm not going to overdo it that much. Backup. My computer is really crying at. Um, I can come down to to the individual colors and change uh, the saturation on the blue, or make it less or or more saturated. So you can also adjust the individual individual colors and the saturations within the colors, which is way cool. Actually, let me, I'll mess up this photo just to show you. So uh, if I want the blue sky to be more saturated, the blues get darker, but the other colors aren't affected at all. Mm. So if you're, if, you're, if you're doing, you know, if you do the overall saturation, everything gets wacky. Mm -hmm. You might not want to do that, but you might want to just saturate the blues more or, or make them uh, darker, change the luminance. You know, you just darken down the blues. So if you want that blue sky to come in a little more, you just adjust the blues. So uh, 10 minutes to go. Would you have any questions that anybody has? I got yeah, one here. You're not online right now. So the question is, when you're on Classic, you're not online right now. Correct. But uh, every two months, you have to be online for them to check to make sure you paid up. So if you if you have a computer that's never online, you can't use you can't use it. You have to go online once in a while so they can check to make sure that the version you're using is has been paid. So you do have to get online once in a while. Um, yes. Um, Lauren, question. It's Carolyn. Um, yes. I just want to know if you. Um, like the one that you did with the church and you really saturated it and you know you had a lot of color um in there that you you know manipulated this photo to um get to yeah that one when you print it will you see it in the same brilliance that you see here online no <laughs> definitely not um uh and that's what that's called gamut uh, the gamut of a printer is, won't show nearly as many colors as a, a computer screen. Uh, so uh, Lightroom, uh, I'll do this really quick, has a built-in soft proofing button here in the develop module that you put in, uh, you enter in up here what printer you're using and what paper you're using because the paper matters too and it will give you a guesstimate of how that might look when you print it. So when I check soft printing, you see, you know, probably the blues and the oranges are, are not nearly as bright as what you get, but you're still looking at it on a screen, which is brighter than paper. So, uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sure. But once you do the soft proofing, could you change the saturation so it looks a little better when you print it? So the question is, if once you've done the soft proofing, could you change the saturation so it looks a little better when you print it? Um, printing is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
but uh, um, you, you know, so you, you kind of have to decide, are you toning your photos to be viewed online or, or in print? Mm -hmm. And you, you tone them drastically different. Mm -hmm. So, but if you give it too much blue, all it's going to do is not print that, that bright, super bright blue. It's mm -hmm. going to make it a little duller blue, mm -hmm. which is the same as the soft printing. So it doesn't really hurt to, to go out of gamut, as they say. And there's, there, especially in Photoshop, there's tremendous ways to tell what the gamut is doing and, and what's going on. And, and you get a lot more control on the, on the print end out of Photoshop, but I still print all mine out of Lightroom because it does a, a really good job. And, and I have a, a big printer here and, and I've learned what combinations, what I can get away with and, mm -hmm. and, you know, so printing is a nightmare. Uh, I have a comment that really had to do with our very first discussion and that was like um, going to Facebook. I don't know anything about Instagram, but I took a course at um, Santa Fe and I was told that any picture you put on Facebook, they have the complete right to use it however they want because you put it on there and that's part of the contract. That is true. Be careful with social media, what you put on. Absolutely. Well, Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Almost any service that you put your picture on, if you've read the fine print, you find out that they have the right to use that photo for anything they want, and they can give it to anybody they want to use it for anything they want. That is not a good thing. No. Laura, so I have a question. I, I never put people pictures online because they can, they can sell them. And I have a friend who this happened to. Uh, this could be a really quick story. Uh, it came down to National Geographic or National Enquirer used a photo of his of a woman walking down the street uh, in a story for drug addicts. The woman was not a drug addict. Sued him. Uh, he, he tried to get everybody else to pay for it, and, and it came down to him. And the same thing can happen if they can give it to anybody. Uh, you know, you, you you can't. You're not going. I'm not going to get in much trouble uh, putting this picture of a church in Iceland online. Somebody might steal it and use it for anything they want, but I, and I lose money, but I'm not going to get sued for it. People, you'll get sued. Lauren, I had a uh, quick question. Yes. Uh, it's Anthony here. Um, I have some uh, old photos from a trip from Alaska like 17, 18 years ago. I scanned a few of them in. They were prints, like probably three by four, three by five. Yeah. Um, they're... Some of them are a bit grainy. Can Lightroom kind of sweeten a grainy print photo? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, the, the real trick to that is do as high a quality a scan as you can to start with. Okay. Uh, but but uh, there is a, a noise reduction thing in Lightroom if you have a picture that, that's noisy or grainy. Uh, grain, grain is a little harder than noise, but, uh, you know. So, so what a lot of people do with pictures like that is try to make them look like they're classics rather than yeah. current. So, vintage. Vintage. And if Would you have you scan the negative, is slide, a negative you're, better or print? You're, you're better off scanning the, the negative or slide rather than the print, too. Okay. You'll get a much higher quality. Thank you. Sure. Good question. Thanks. I was thinking the same thing. Good. Thank you for this meeting. That was really wonderful. Sure. Any other questions? Do you ever use the histogram clicking on that? Okay, so the question is, do I ever use the histogram? Uh, the answer is yes and no. <clears throat> um, you'll read about people online who say they look at the histogram of every photo and that's how they determine if their exposure is right. Uh, those people are pretty much full of crap. Um, the only thing a histogram can truly tell you is if your blacks are too black or your whites are too white. So when you are when you're uh, uh, clipping or, or getting something that's too black, uh, if you click there, it'll show you that that's too black. That means you've lost detail in the black. Um, and some people think that's a horrible thing. I purposely do it on every photo because it makes them pop. Not every photo, but pretty much every photo, I take my blacks to the point where they're clipping. Mm -hmm. On the other end, on the right side is the whites. And if you take your whites too white, you lose all detail in the highlights in the whites, and that can be that can be bad. That that can show up really bad. Mm -hmm. So in a photo like this, 
uh, if you if you're clipping on your whites, you you are uh, losing detail in the highlights, like like up in the clouds or in the in the foam or in the snow. So that can be really bad. Now. What's going on in between is totally dependent on the tonal value of the scene you're photographing. So when a, when a person says, I can look at this mountain range and tell you if your exposure is, is good, or, sorry, I didn't mean to click on that. They are, uh, they're full of themselves because uh, this picture has a totally different uh, histogram view than this one or this one. And so, um, you know, this one has a lot of tones that are dark, so they're all pushed to the left. Um, you know, so so your histogram is going to be to the left. A picture that's fairly bright. Do I have a fairly bright picture handy? You know, she's pretty bright. The histogram is going to be more to the right because there's more light tones in it. So the in betweens really don't mean a thing. But when you're shooting, you know, you look at the histogram on your camera. It should tell, it'll tell you if you're clipping either your blacks or your whites, and the whites are the ones you really want to worry about. Anything else? If it's something, come up with something, holler, but uh, I just want to uh, remind you, I do have uh, uh, a beginner Lightroom class coming up. Uh, it's on the meetups and it's on my website, and then an advanced Lightroom class in November. So, uh, can, can you give us your website again? Yep, my website is laurenphotos.com, L-O-R-E-N-P-H-O-T-O-S, laurenphotos.com. What do you go over in the, um, in the advanced class? I'm sorry? What do you go over in the advanced class? We go over uh, uh, more in depth on, it is more focused on the toning part, the develop module, get, uh, really going into uh, making your photos sing. Uh, we talk a little bit about uh, some advanced things on the on the library side, but it's uh, 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 really going in in deep on on uh, uh, the the intricacies of the develop module. So I also do lots of destination workshops. I'm I, uh, uh, going to Iceland in February, uh, Italy in, in uh, Tuscany in in May, uh, Venice in uh, February. March, February, last day of February, 1st of March for uh, Carnival, uh, Chile in July, that, one, that one's uh, sold out, and uh, uh, August going back to Iceland again. So, and then there's a lot of local ones if you want. I'm doing quite a few into New York City. I purchased a 12 passenger van, so I provide transportation on. Uh, all my workshops now. So if you want to go into the city and you don't want to don't want to go by yourself or fight your crowds. It's a fun way to go. We just did one Friday or Saturday night. Uh, Rich, who was here, went and and he just told me he had a great time. Um, and we'll be doing them in Philadelphia and, and DC next year. And so where do you leave from, Lauren? It depends on the on the workshop where I leave from. Um, uh, like New York, I I. Uh, pick up people here in New Jersey, then stopped at Penn Station. So if anybody wants to take the train into Penn Station and then also to Grand Central Terminal. So people oh, coming, okay. coming from that way might uh, stop at Grand Central. So we pick them up there. Uh, Philadelphia see. will be something similar. And, and when I get down to DC next year, and, and hopefully I'm going to do some Boston ones next year too. So, so those might be one day, they might be two day workshops. Uh, they're a lot of fun and my my vermont workshops are i love them too so i have a house in vermont so i work out of there so my fall foliage is, is sold out but i have a winter one in january that's a, a lot of fun uh and uh, a night photography uh that one's scheduled for uh, august i believe in vermont so if you want to learn how to shoot the stars as in twinkle twinkle little uh <laughs> Not paparazzi, hello. <laughs> well, we might do one of those sometime. That, that might be kind of fun too. But a lot of different things going on, so it's fun. So I appreciate everybody uh, uh, hopping on and uh, sticking with me for this long.
Uh, this will be recorded. If you want to watch it again, I will post uh, on the, the meetup uh, where the recording is and uh, you can watch it again uh, all you want. Uh, I just ask you, you don't share. Well, you can no, share it with anybody you want. I don't care. Share it. Um, and then uh, uh, if you have any questions, drop me an email and I'll, I'll do what I can to help you out other than hold your hand through everything, but. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, very Thank you so much. much. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.